and welcome to another episode of the Two Fans Podcast. I'm your host, Joshua Amen. And I'm your other co-host, Ari Jesselson. And today, uh, we're going to be talking about uh, something a uh, little... A uh, little, little odd, of course, happens once a year in most sports. Uh, something I've, I have said multiple times that should not be happening this year uh, is the All-Star Game. And in most years, it's, uh, it's a pretty, pretty fun time, fun weekend. You have, you have your events, you have the game. Uh, it's a blast honoring uh, some, uh, some of the best players in whatever league. Uh, so today, what Ari and I are going to do is we're going to look at uh, some of the ways that we think uh, that they can improve these All-Star games. Yeah, and by no means do we support the All-Star game this year. Obviously, we both believe that there's no point in a game or a skills contest. So this is just when COVID's over, how could the All-Star game be better? And one point that I'd like to say, veterans game. You know, have some old-timers, have some Hall of Famers. Get on, just get out on the blacktop and have a game. Muggsy Bogues, Jordan, Shaq, have these guys come out and do 11 point games. That, I, I was not even, I was nowhere even, even close to, to thinking of that. But like, not now that, like, you, you bring it up and I, I'm like, yeah, that is, that is great. I think I would love to see it. I think uh, some of the, some of the, there would certainly be enough uh, interest from, uh, some some uh, some of the retired veterans. Uh, that that would be that would be fun to see. I think uh, another uh, another uh, semi interesting sort of feature that could be added uh, to the NBA uh, All Star Game is uh, I will admit this is not mine. This is one I heard uh, from a couple of years ago from a YouTuber by the name of Mike Korzemba. Uh, so shout out to him. Uh, was uh, introducing a a one on one tournament. Uh, that that could be. I feel like that has that has a lot of potential for uh, some memeable uh, moments, some viral moments. Um, of course, of course, I'm I'm sure the players would uh, uh, would certainly uh, bring out their their most competitive uh, sides, uh, and that could that that could make uh, for for an even more fun Saturday night. Oh, definitely. It's, that honestly sounds like a great idea. I did not think of it at all. But now I'm kind of thinking of all these great matchups that we missed out on in the past. And, you know, I want to see kind of like a LeBron D. Wade situation, Shaq, Jordan. I just want to see guys do a one-on-one now. I have so many scenarios in my head where I want to see that happen. So that's something that does have to be implied in the game. Yeah, I will say, though, um, as far as like going through uh, all of the all the four major uh, sports, in terms of the All-Star game, what I think can be improved upon, uh, the NBA was probably the only one uh, where I looked at and said, like, for what it is right now, it, it is great on its own the, the way it is. The only thing I, w- I would say, which I've said many times before, is just why are we having it this year? We're still... Still, we're still in the middle of a of a pandemic. There, there's it's way too much risk for for too for too little of a reward. Yes, it was definitely not worth it. So we just have to shout it again. Please wear your masks and stay safe. But another thing, just going back to the All Star game, let's have an outdoor game. Let's have some beach games. The NHL has some outdoor games, and that is some of the most beautiful games. To ever to just ever witness the sunset, the sunset laying down while the NHL while the well, over the rink. I mean, it's just nice to see nice scenery pace. Have it on the beach, let it relax. You know, the All Star Game is about fun, having fun and laying back. I think that's the perfect chance to have it somewhere on Miami Beach or something like that. Ah, uh, yeah, that that's a whole whole another thing. Like, I, I, I mean, it's it's an interesting concept that like uh, that. Who knows? Maybe I feel like. Uh, Maybe not for 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 the All Star Game because I feel like what 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 I do like about the All Star Game uh, is sort of having like all of the best players uh, in one NBA uh, official of, like I'm, I'm air quotes official like game that makes it feel like yes it's like a, it's a spectacle for the fans but also feels semi sort of like semi a real a real game setting i know not everyone takes it 100 seriously um but but the uh 
I mean, what well, yeah, you still have refs, you still have rules, you still have all that. I feel like a a sort of much more like relaxed uh, or beach type or outdoor type uh, gimmicky uh, game could be used for some for. Uh, for I know the NBA, the Friday before All Star Games has the the Celebrity All Star Game. Uh, uh, what's it called? I know the M- the yeah, MLB too, like uh, uh, re- uh, day in the day before the Home Run Derby, uh, they have their uh, their Celebrity Softball Game. Uh, so something like that, I feel like could uh could have could have potential to work. Uh, but now that we uh, bring up baseball, uh, I will say that. The home run derby, the changes they've made uh, to that in recent years, turning it uh, to to a a, a timer uh, instead instead of you have a certain amount of swings, uh, has worked has worked wonders. It's been just so amazing uh, each each of past the past uh, few years. I think the one thing that I would change with uh, with that is sort of the first round have it uh, not be a bracket then. And just have like a free for all where everyone gets uh, three minutes, hit as many homers as they can, and then just have the top four advance into that bracket. What do you think of that? That actually sounds pretty good. I mean, there's no point to have brackets in the beginning of the round. So I, I got to agree with you on that. I, I think that actually really worked. But um, so you're just going back to basketball. I, I want to get off the topic a little bit. But skills competitions, I'm not talking about what the usual is. I'm talking more of street ball, where going be, uh, spinning the ball, all those tricks in basketball. Look at look at the old and one clips. What about a game like that with the pros or with just the vets? I think that would be really fun just for people to try off these crazy moves. Yeah, another another interesting thing. There are a whole lot of, uh, and I think the, these, are, these are just some of the, uh, we're just scratching the surface here to what we think, like, can be expanded within these, uh, within the, these these also, these all-star spectacles. I think sorry because I do want to go back to to baseball a little bit because while the home run derby is great and all, I would love to to see more than just that. Of course, the NBA has the dunk contest, but also the three point contest and the skills challenge and that that whole all of it. Uh, I mean, it, it it works well. Like just the home run derby. While the home run derby itself is is great. I think we could add a couple, uh, a couple more events. Uh, I would ideally want something for pitchers, although uh, I totally understand like the the toll just just one game takes and uh, why pitchers wouldn't uh, may or may not be willing uh, to do it. So I, I could understand that. But as far as uh, as far as uh, what what's uh, quickly becoming a, a, a lost art in the sport of baseball. I want to see a base stealing challenge. Uh, something fun they could uh, they could do is uh, is a certain. Be it again, you could do, you could do the old home run derby uh, way where they get a certain amount of attempts uh, or however many times they uh, they fail. You could do like you you get you get fifteen tries and however many times uh, you're safe. And I think one thing uh, one thing I would I would love to see. Uh, if this if this were to happen, is to have sort of higher uh, ranked players, probably ranked by stolen bases, uh, get to choose uh, which catcher and middle infielder are going to try to are going to try to throw them out. That actually sounds really interesting, and I've I've always been confused of why the MLB never had more skills like the home run derby. You could have something like how fast could the pitcher What's the fastest speed the pitcher could throw from from the mound? What, what's the farthest an outfielder could throw to? You could do some stuff, but for, for just going back to the stealing bases, yeah, it is a dying art at the end of the day, and that'll be great to see. But I just want to know how would you do it? Would it be in the game? You get the point. You get like points, like what Taco Bell does when you get a home run. Would it be something like that, like a promotion. Would it be a point system for how for how many bases or what base you get? Um, I would think that it was pr- that it would probably just be like uh, uh, maybe I don't know maybe alternating maybe like a like a like a drill line sort of maybe like a uh, sort of like a, a reset or, or a gauntlet of either just like going back to like the first base trying to steal second uh, or uh, have like the same runner uh, go to uh, 
uh, try to steal second, whether they're out or they're safe, go, go from second, try to steal third, uh, and then go back, either go back to second and first or just sort of uh, do the lap around. Yeah, that definitely would be interesting to see. Obviously, like, we both agree that uh, we don't really see stolen bases. It would just be nice to see more with baseball in their All-Star Game weekend. Yeah, I think one more, one more idea uh, that I sort of had in mind, you kind of mentioned this with how far an outfielder can throw. I think you sort of you sort of see with uh, uh, with uh, the NFL their skill showdown. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but with with uh, what they have with the with the quarterback sort of passing uh, precision, a uh, little little mini game, so to speak. The NHL kind of is the same thing with their their shooting stars. Uh, I think they the I think baseball could do something similar uh, with sort of an outfield relay, uh, where, you, where you, you get a you get a jugs machine. Outfield, outfielders will either have to I don't know, make a catch or sort of uh, retrieve a ball uh, from the wall and then try to act accurately and quickly uh, sort of throw it to a given base. Uh, and they get, they get points based on that. I think that, I think that would be, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, definitely. It, it's just interesting to see how baseball could take it because obviously there's a lot to expand for their All-Star game. And if you're anyone who works for MLB, NFL, NHL, NBA, Contact us. We got some good ideas. Yes, indeed, we do. Uh, those are kind of the. I mean, of course, there's just the one sport, but those are kind of the, all the ideas I have uh, uh, up for up for baseball. Uh, what say some of, some of your ideas for other sports? Well, I was just gonna ask you the same thing because the NFL, a lot of the things in the Pro Bowl, it's been joked upon. People don't take it seriously. It's kind of. It's kind of how soccer is viewed in America as the all-star game for sports, if that analogy makes sense, if you kind of get what I'm saying. Yeah, no, I, I get I get it. That, like, that people, of course, I mean, no one really likes the Pro Bowl. The The players sort of play it very half-heartedly. Uh, the fans, I mean, I'm sure they're, they're, the, they're the diehard football fans that will watch any football, uh, but, it, but everyone knows, like, it, it's, it's not a real game in, by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but, but the skill showdown, on the other hand, uh, that's done, uh, what is it, the Friday before or Thursday? Uh, some, uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah, sometime uh, towards the end of that, at that Pro Bowl week, I think it is, uh, I mean, I don't know if someone who's seen it and, and disliked it with all the, the different uh, mini games that they, that they have with their, again, we mentioned the passing precision, the best hands competition. I know they had uh, something for kickers a couple of years ago. Um, and I think, I think, of course, when you have with, with the Pro Bowl with football, when you have 22 starters on each team, you can, ha you can create so many more of, of these mini games and get so many more people involved you could do like more team events like dodgeball and the relay race i know are are, are two, two of my favorites because again like it it be football of, of, of all sport of all the major sports it is so much a a team sport and love, love to see that that team aspect even if it's not football um and i think i think they could take some inspiration from and i know this sounds kind of uh counterintuitive from from what we said earlier uh, with me praising Madden, but these are, I'm talking about the old Madden, like Madden 11, Madden 12, because uh, I remember playing those on the Wii, uh, and some of those mini games, I feel like they could sort of incorporate. Uh, one specifically I have in mind uh, was, the, was the trench fight, where basically what you, the, what the player had to do was uh, control a defensive lineman and get through uh, three offensive linemen uh, as quickly as possible. And I think if you could, like, do that, like, uh, like the... Like each defensive lineman takes uh, takes one one shot at it. Combine the best times. Uh, see, like whoever's whoever's fastest wins. I, I think I think that would that would be very very fun to watch. Yeah, it's always been weird that the NFL doesn't have these skills competitions or anything like that. Obviously, NFL no fun league. They've been trying to get rid of that reputation. But a few challenges that I thought they could have was like how what's the farthest the QB could throw for a 40 and 100 yard dash competitions. You could have how far a kicker could kick. And there's just a lot of fun you could have with it. I think just adding more skills competitions to it and having more team games. Even if you just divide the games by like AFC versus NFC, or you could have like AFC East versus AFC East. 
and just have some stuff like that. But skills competitions and team games are a real big thing the NFL has to focus on. Um, I mean, I would uh, would probably have to have to ask if the AFC East would even have to play that game because uh, the the I don't even does the NFC East have any 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 Pro Bowlers? No, or rather, I'm just saying, or like, does, the, they have enough. Well, I'm just saying, like, you can have the players from the things, and they can have like a dodgeball game, but you do the teams, like who's ever on the all the AFC West Pro Bowlers are one team, and all the AFC North Pro Bowlers are another team. You can just do something like that. Well, it's not as ideal as having AFC versus NFC. It's just a little idea you could have. Yeah, I will. Um, I will say I'm not really much of a fan of like splitting uh, teams into conference and division. Uh, I'll I'll, t- I'll tell you why is because like the the appeal of the All Star Game and, and and the Pro Bowl is having all of the best players in one p- in one place playing one game and I feel like when you when you break it down into all of the best players from these two divisions it doesn't really doesn't really do 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 it the same way uh, and I feel like that's that's probably the biggest issue. Uh, I have with uh, with the NHL All Star Game. Uh, they actually uh, early in the 2010s did the sort of uh, captains uh, uh, picking their teams uh, before it was cool. Before it was adapted by uh, by the NBA, uh, they they stopped it a couple of years ago and switched now to a format where team where All Star teams aren't decided by conference but by division. Uh, and within the four divisions, you basically have a th- uh, a three on three game uh, t- or three on three tournament uh, to determine uh, to determine the champion. And as far as like the three on three goes, like I I totally like I'm I'm on board with that in the sense of the All Star Game. As again, we say like it's not it's a game, but not really a game that like that we can take more lightheartedly. And I feel like the three on three accomplishes that sort of setting uh pretty well but again as far as like as far as the all-star game all of the best players aren't going to be playing this in the exact same game and i feel like that sort of because uh because when you when you only have to look at one game that's one thing but like if i'll look at the the nhl all-star game and i'm and they're only at like the uh midway through the second game uh, they're like, I'm, I'm not going to want to stick around for three whole games. Cause we only, we're, we're in the 21st century. We only have the attendance man for one game. I believe it is six teams and yeah, people don't have the, people don't have the attention span to watch hockey all day, especially for different teams. Um, I should correct you. It's, it's four teams, four divisions. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. But my point's kind of still stands that no one, not many people have the attention span to watch four teams the entire day. Just duke it out. Yeah, and I think um, as far as like uh, for the NHL, that that's the that's really the biggest problem uh, I have as far as their All Star game goes. The as far as the the skills competitions uh, that they have with hardest shot, with fastest skater, uh, with the kind of the things that uh, that you had uh, said wanted to see their equivalents uh, in other sports. Uh, they have that. They have like we said the. Uh, the shooting stars, like it, it's a very nice uh, uh, variety of events there, and I think the the biggest thing, again, aside from the aside from the the four all star teams uh, that I have a problem with is that they need to actually get their players to play in all star games. You see now a trend of uh, players who are just opting out of all star games uh, to get. Uh, to get rest. Ovechkin hasn't played in, uh, in 2019 or in 2020. Uh, in 2020, Mark andre Fleury and Tuka uh, Rask both opted out. Uh, I should probably clarify that this 2020 All-Star game uh, was pre-COVID. Um, and, uh, and within, uh, within sort of the, the, their final vote uh, within, the, uh, within one, of, one of the Eastern Conference divisions, uh, Detroit, uh, Detroit Red Wings for Dylan Larkin uh, said that he did not want to be voted in because he preferred the rest. And that, that just doesn't bode well 
as an organization, when you're trying to hype up, you have the best players playing in one game, and then not everyone is there. And, and injuries are one thing, but like deciding not to, not to, not to play uh, is another. And I'm not, and this, this, I feel like has to go to come down to the NHL with, uh, with finding a way to incentivize players to play. Yeah, I get that. It's obviously it puts in a weird feeling when this high desired player who played his best doesn't want to play in a stage that celebrates the best players of that year. But for a lot of players, do you, do you want to risk having injured in this fun, nonchalant game? I think for some sports like the, the Pro Bowl, like the NHL and the NFL, what, it doesn't hurt them to put those events after the big championships. I mean, what would be the big deal if the Pro Bowl was pushed back one week further and the NHL, uh, and the NHL All-Star game was put back after the Stanley Cup? That way, the season's entirely over, and you don't have to risk, oh, if I get hurt, I'm done for this season in my playoff. My team's playoff chances are slimmer. Yeah, and I think that's kind of why, A, the Pro Bowl is done after the season and teams in the Super Bowl don't send their players to the Pro Bowl, and B, why it's so sort of, like, not football. Because players, like, yeah, they want to play. It's fun, but they don't want to, they don't want to, like, but they don't want to get hurt. They'll, they'll, they're playing it like extremely cautious. I, 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 I know I, I sort of, if I'm coming off as like some of it, like, oh, oh, this generation is too soft. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that it's that there, there's, there is a reason uh, for that. And, and it's, it's a good one. Yeah, definitely. Especially when they've seen clips of older games, where guys are just getting absolutely destroyed. It makes it feel like we're part of a different time period. But I think just pushing back those season, pushing back those playoffs would make would help players see, realize, oh, at the end of the season, it doesn't really matter. Let me go a little harder. And just one thing for all of their games, if I may, why not have the fans involved in some way? Why not have them participate in some of these skill cut challenges? Like you could have Steph Curry versus Mike the Mailman in a three-point contest. You could just have some of these random people, some of these random fans doing the doing the home run derby, the dunk contest. Uh, NFL's throwing the the kick it, the NFL skills competitions, forty yard dashes, NHL's uh, fastest player. It would just be fun to see the fans compared to them, and also not just fun, but imagine the haters saying, "Oh, I could do better than this guy," being on the ice and getting and being failed completely on live TV. It will be a, a spectacle just to see. Uh, that I don't know whether I would love to see that or hate to see that, but. I know clips uh, clips would uh, would go viral if if yeah it was okay I had a had a snappy uh, way to finish that sentence and then lost it uh, but yeah clips like those would would absolutely go uh, go viral and I, I again I I don't know whether I would love to see it or I would hate to see it but I have uh, uh, I have opinions on it. I guess if that if you count that as an opinion, um, one more thing, I feel like I would I would uh, would love to see uh, for uh, for the NBA All Star Game is how about five minutes of reg ball? What's reg ball? Reg ball. And should I be scared? Um. Hmm. I don't know if I have an answer to that. Um, reg ball is a Russian variant slash cross of basketball and wrestling. According to their official site, uh, excuse me, the Russian Reg Ball Federation, uh, the rules are very simple. Everything is allowed except for foot pegs, shocks in the back, and a clear provocation to the collision. That yeah. way, I don't know if you, if you've uh, if you've seen any highlights. It pretty much plays like a mix between football and basketball, and it would uh, it would be a, a culture shock to some. Um, I think it it would it would be a sight to see. I'll tell you that. Yeah, that sounds really interesting. 
Um, if you know me personally, I love a lot of weird sports. So uh, I just bothered some people with it, just showed some people. And one of my favorites, it's not my favorite. I will get to my favorite. But one of my favorites is Extreme Ironing. And according, yeah, you heard me right, Extreme Ironing. And according to the website, it quotes, combines the thrill of an extreme outdoor activity with the satisfaction of a well-pressed shirt, ironing in extreme condition, a well-pressed shirt. Um, so I guess- So what exactly some- makes- Sorry, but what exactly makes the ironing so extreme? That's what I'm going to. If you Google any pictures or videos, they're on top of cliffs. They're between mountains. There's paragliding on it. Some there's a picture on the internet of a sky of what's it called? The guys, the not the skydivers, the paragliders, right? With the big with the big triangle wings, and there's a guy on top of him ironing his Hawaiian shirt. I'm going to show you my screen just to show you that. Oh, I'm going to send you this photo just to see it. Wait, can you not share it. your screen? No, I can't. Oh, wh- you were the host of this. You were the host first. So, uh, no, what's you going- were the host first. Then you made me host. Yeah, that's I can't do it. Um, can I? Yeah, whatever. We'll, 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 we'll work on that when the next time, when next time this happens. Yeah. So there are people doing it on top of that. There's people, there's someone doing it on top of his car. They're doing it in rafts. Someone is doing it while type while uh, he's roped between two lines connected by a mountain. So if you just see these pictures, there's there's three people skydiving while ironing their shirts. These pictures are just a skeptical to see and just to see how extreme and how funny they can go. It's it's if you want something to do for 10 minutes, it's clearly a thrill and it's very exciting. And I'm sorry, there's also one. Of someone doing it underwater. I forgot to mention that. So extreme irony, it's just a thrill to see. Okay, I know none of you can can see my face right now, but it went through all kinds of contortions uh, within that monologue. So I mean I'm intrigued to say the least. Uh, I think I don't think though. Um, it is as, as, no, it, it is weirder. It is weirder, uh, than, uh, than another weird sport. I, uh, piqued my interest, uh, from Japan. It's called Bokaoshi. Uh, the rules are very simple. Uh, your team and your opposing team, which by the way, each have 150 players, um, have a, a pole that you set up. And the object of the game is to knock down your opponent's pole before they knock down yours. And pretty much anything goes except punches and kicks. So it just looks like, uh, I mean, what you expect 150 people uh, fighting around a pole to look like. I, I kind of want to see that now. I'm, I'm not going to lie. That, that does seem interesting. But uh, got to ask you a question, Josh. Did you did you read the Harry Potter books or did you watch the movies? Uh, yes, I think I know where you're going with this. Yeah, I, I honestly, think I feel like I feel like Quidditch has become pretty, uh, pretty normalized nowadays. Well, I think Harry Potter is stupid. That's just, it's just all stupid. I think if you like it, you're not stupid. But I think you might be a little weird. I hate those people that, oh, I'm a Ravenclaw, I'm a Hufflepuff, I'm a Gryffindor. I don't really care, to be honest. It just looks weird seeing grown men in 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 boat and tie in like these fancy, fancy shirts and pants, having brooms on their legs while they're running around, throwing the circle between hoops. It just looked weird to me. But unless brooms can fly, then it's not going to be weird. But that's just me. I, I just think it just looks weird. And as, as someone who I just don't know how to explain it. I just feel like I want to wear a mask. If I was them, I'd probably wear a mask. Because I, I don't know. It just feels... It looks stupid. That's what I'm going to say. Uh, well, I would be wearing a mask at all times if I'm, if I'm outside. Just uh... True. Uh, <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. Certain, certain, of course, certain sports are... Uh, are perceived as different to, to certain people. I'm sure 
uh, who knows, if you introduced basketball to someone who's never seen it, you they would probably have a lot of questions like, oh, yeah, why are they dribbling? That's so weird. Hey, at the end of the day, it's different strokes for different folks. You do you, I'm going to do me. But that's just, that's just weird for me. But if you enjoy it, go ahead. Don't let me tell you otherwise. Keep doing you. Just for me, I think it's weird. I think that's just weird. But hey, you do you at the end of the day. I don't want to persuade anyone's opinions. I don't want to be that guy. If you enjoy it and you're not harming anyone, why not do it? So another weird sport I have, elephant polo. It's Man, here polo. I was thinking. Here I was thinking, oh yeah, I have some pretty interesting. You're you're just like think going into the most random corners of human existence. Yeah, so it's just polo on elephants, and it really is. Just, it's just fun to see. That's that's all it is. It's just polo. It's just elephant polo, and another one that's basically in the name unicycle hockey. So it's just hockey, but you're riding on unicycles. I just really just want to see. I think you said you would uh, mention your favorite. I, I know I know what that is. I don't know if the uh, if if anyone at home does, but this one, oh man, this one. Please go ahead and explain it. Uh, unicycle hockey, or my favorite sport? No, your favorite. Oh, my that favorite, one. My favorite weird sport is chess boxing. Shall I explain what it is? Go ahead. Where do you want to take a guess? No. I mean, I already know. Oh, oh yeah. You've explained it to me. And... Yes. <laughs> it is three minutes of chess, three minutes of boxing, and you win by either getting a KO or a checkmate. It combines the brains and the bronze, making it the perfect sport. Perfect is a very subjective word. It um... is, but, it is per but perfect is also the definition of chess boxing. So perfect would be described as anything involving uh, victory by checkmate or knockout? Yeah, no, it's just chess boxing. There's no other definition. And next to chess boxing, there's its own definition. Hey, that, I got you in a checkmate. You can't do anything. Well, I'd, I'd rather be checkmated than, than, uh, than knocked out. Uh, I will say that. Yeah, I, I get it. But have you heard of outhouse racing? These just keep getting weirder and weirder. <laughs> so outhouse racing, I wish you could see Josh's face. So it happens in Michigan, and you build your, you know what an outhouse is, right? It's like just a, it's basically a porta potty. You build your own outhouses, you put and you race them down a hill in Michigan. There are multiple age groups, as young as children to grown adults. And just, it's just interesting. It's just skeptical to see again. I mean, it, imagine like 20 porta potties rolling, all customized, all made of wood or whatever. They all have their own unique color schemes and logos, all just rolling down a hill. It's just quite, it's just quite interesting to see. And here I am making fun of Quidditch. <laughs> okay, do you just, just go ahead? Like, let, let, do you have any more things that can top that? Yes, Zorbing, human-sized hamster balls racing down a hill. You're in a human-sized racing ball, you're going down the hill. No more explanation to that. There's Bosa ball, which combines soccer, volleyball, and gymnastics. You kick a ball over the net, and the floor is a trampoline. And then my last one I have, underwater hockey. You go to the bottom of a pool, and you just hit a little, a little water thing with little sticks in the net. Okay, well, I'm... I'm uh... On the one hand, I'm a little underwhelmed at some of the last ones, but on the other hand, uh, I, I don't think I could have taken another, another chess boxing. Uh, <laughs> so with that, thank you all so much for listening to us and bearing with us uh, in this uh, unusual episode. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or something you want us to talk about, you can always email us at twofanspodcast at gmail.com. We do this every single day. Monday through Thursdays to Spotify, Anchor, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcast. So until next time, wait, we'll wait, talk wait. to you then. Whoa. Wait, before that, I got one more. Oh, you are, you are absolutely right. I, I forgot something. Yes. Well, I was going to say uh, cheese rolling. That happens in Wisconsin where they just roll circles of cheese down. But you were going to say something else. Uh, 
Uh, first of all, I think she's rolling actually happened somewhere in England. Um, my bad. I didn't really write down my notes, but you were about to say something at the end. Um, yeah, is that uh, just the other day, and unfortunately, I don't can't say that I know for sure whether it is up uh, or not right now. Uh, but uh, the two of us uh, were on with uh, some of our friends over at Water Cooler TV uh, for one of their uh, episodes uh, on the NFL and uh, and some uh, some current events there. Uh, so that that was uh, I will say that that was a, it was a fun experience having more than just the two of us uh, uh, to record because we generally have similar ideas. It was nice to sort of uh, talk to someone else who. Uh, who who we were able to argue with a little more? Um, are you you want to say any, any more to that? Uh, they were just fantastic people. It was an honor to be on the show. They will be on the show in a later episode. We don't know really when or what the topic is. But if you do have a topic, please let us know at two fans podcast at gmail dot com. Uh, the number two and no and all lowercase no spaces. And if you just if you just want to chat with us, have any suggestions, you, you can use that email only. Any, uh, as well we just love hearing from you guys we'd like to chat with you guys it'd be fun to see uh yeah di uh did out of that of course go uh uh go once it's up i don't know whether again i don't know whether it'll be uh up right now but you know what even if it's not go go check out uh, our friends at water cooler tv uh we'll put their links uh in the description uh but as always until next time we will talk to you then